Okay, it is fight week. British and Commonwealth heavyweight titles on the line. And I'm joined by the man who currently holds both of them, the pride of Suffolk, Fabio Wardley. Fabio, first of all, thanks for joining us. You're a man in, in great demand uh, this hmm. week. We're building up to the fight on Sunday. Uh, how's things? Yeah, everything's going really well, thank you. Busy week, a lot to do, a lot to tick off, uh, a lot going on in preparations, obviously, for the big day, but all going really well. Just, just before we get to the fight itself, I, I do wonder, like, this is your first high-profile main event. Your name is at the top of the bill. You're first on the poster. I turned on my telly this morning. There's a whole section dedicated to you, and <laughs> you've got a background documentary. And you've done the gloves are off. Mm. What is that like, though, as a, as a boxer? Because I was listening to, to Steve Bunce's uh, podcast before the AJ and Garnu fight, and there was a guy on there who works with AJ who said it's kind of weird. Like, boxers are the reverse of of Hollywood stars, if you like, because Hollywood stars shoot a film and then they spend months promoting it. Whereas you have all this time, you have to promote the fight and do all the, you know, speak to people like me and for more important and bigger platforms. And then you still have to do the most important thing at the end of it. So mm -hmm. is it difficult to balance all that? Because clearly you've got to be getting your sparring in, getting your rest in, getting your S and C in, eating properly, really committed to that side of things as well. Is that, has that been difficult? Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a different task to try and manage uh, and pay attention to and make sure that you're still you're not getting dragged away away from the things that are more important, like mm. your training, like your nutrition. Make sure you're staying on point, getting your sleep in, and all the rest of it. Um, and make sure you're you're still all while all of this is going on. It's great. Everyone's got a camera in your face. Everyone's paying you attention. Everyone wants to talk to you. Don't get me wrong. It's fantastic, but you have got a job to do. So that has to be priority number one. So, um, yeah, you just got to make sure you stay focused really, and stay, stay, stay on point and looking at what, you know, the goal is. Yeah. And I will, I will say, as I say, I said to you before we started rolling, thanks so much for finding the time to do this. Clearly a, a huge week <laughs> in your life and it's much appreciated. You always make time for us. So Pleasure. top Pleasure. man headlining the O2 mate. Every time I speak to you, I've been speaking to you before fights for years. It's been, going up and up and each fight yeah. seems to be bigger and bigger yeah. it's a bit silly now mate you, now you're about yeah. to headline <laughs> the biggest and most iconic <laughs> arena in the uk uh, and you walk last to the ring as the champion yeah. how, just, how does that feel knowing that's going to happen yeah it's, all, it's like a joke it's getting out of hand really isn't yeah it? Like, <laughs> yes yeah. it's all getting a bit much <laughs> yeah no it's it's funny one because a lot of people say that they're like oh how's it feel like, it must be great and I, it all, I guess I almost like a little bit ruined it for myself, but I just try and ignore it for the time being. Yeah. I try not to think about it as a thing, as a whole, too much of what it is and not the meaning of it, but like what it all is and everything. I try to just be like, look, in my brain goes, look, that's cool, that's good, but everything at the moment is just we have a job to do, we have a job to do, we have a job to do, focus on the job. All the other little side bits are great, I get it, but stay focused on the task and, and don't get distracted because then we'll have many more nights of the O2. But at least after the fight, I can, I'll stand around, I'll have a little look. I, I always, after my fights, I always have a quiet moment to myself. I give myself like five, 10 minutes and just look around, soak it in and be like, yeah, okay, we're doing all right. Things are going well. I think that's fair to say, mate. It, it, with, as I say, you're going to be walking last to the ring, this huge night at the O2, live on Sky Sports, thousands in the arena. Have you got anything special planned for the walkout? Is it going to be the traditional Simon Says? You're not going to bring out a little ginger pop prince to, to walk <laughs> to the ring? <laughs> no, nothing too, nothing too special, nothing, um, nothing different, really. Again, keep it all the same. I know it's a big occasion, but keep everything the same. Keep it all good. All, everything that's worked for the past, let's keep it moving, stay on top of it. So... Yeah, nothing too crazy. Um, no, no other famous people from Ipswich will be turning up that night. At least I don't think. Okay, <laughs> okay, we'll keep that for Portman Road. Um, what about this fight then, mate? So Fraser Clark, obviously. There's, I'm not going to go through all the background, but you were meant to fight last year. Mm. Um, for whatever reason, that fight didn't happen. It sounds to me like his team advised him against it. Um, and now you're going to fight in what is now a, a really big fight. What? It's called bad blood, but I get the sense you don't really have much bad blood between you. What do you, what do you make of him as a, as a boxer and what do you expect him as, as an opponent? Yeah, there's something there. There's a little bit of needle. We've both said our piece and had some things to say and choice words about the other one. So there's definitely something there. Um, yeah. Not Definitely not on the comparative levels to obviously my last fight and stuff, but there's definitely a bit of something there. 
um, as a as a fighter and a boxer overall, I do think he's good. I do think yeah. he's good. Um, I have said it and gave him his credit and said, look, like the the stuff you've achieved in your amateur career is great. Like to have a bronze medal is is, is a fantastic achievement. Your professional career a bit left wanting at the moment, but still moving along. Whatever is all is all good. So I give him that credit along the board. I just think and know that I'm much better. Yeah, I mean, again, it's been clearly that part of this marketing has been Olympian versus white collar boxer, which for mm. me is way too simplistic. I mean, if you look at your, you know, even professionally, you've got twice the amount of knockouts as he's got as as professional fights. Um, but but I do think there's maybe something in the him being the more traditional boxing stylist and you maybe being mm. a little bit more unorthodox. You know, I saw him fight Dave Allen. He's got a, a very nice jab and he's he's obviously very tight and compact. He doesn't do anything extraordinary. Whereas obviously you have this ability to to pull things out of your locker and fight in multiple different ways. Is, is would you say that's fair to say you you're even his dad actually, I was watching the thing this morning, said that he thinks it's boxer versus fighter. Fraser's the mm. boxer and, and you're the fighter. Yeah, very much so. I think there is there is definitely that that like you said, the, the white collar and ABA um two sides of it that everyone's yeah. everyone's putting together is a fair fair reasoning for it it's not as simple as that but it's definitely a good base point to look at and go right these are the kind of the two two things that will be playing off each other um he's definitely the more well-rounded boxer like don't worry i'm, I'm giving that i'm not ignorant to that fact but mm. really areas that excel i i have more than those than him and and they've they've been worth more in my fights and they've been more useful, those extra skills I have. So bringing them through on the night as well will be the same thing for me. And it's definitely fair to say that you've been in the fire. I mean, you have tested yourself, as, as we spoke before about going up through the levels. Each fight, you know, seemed like you, it was another step up. Whereas for Fraser, certainly as a pro, this is his big test, isn't it? Mm. Stepping in with you or on such a, a big stage as well. Yeah, massively. That's the thing, isn't it? Is that I've I've done it, so that will give me a level of confidence. And I know he he'll say that he's been through it in the amateurs and stuff. It's a different yeah. game entirely. It's a different thing. Um, being in even even things down to like this week is in fight week and stuff. It's mm. pressure. It's, you'll have more cameras in front of you than you've had before. More questions. More people trying to poke you, prod you. There's more. There's just way more going on for you to deal with mentally as well as training yourself physically for a fight so there's way more that goes into it when you're when it's a professional fight and when it's a professional fight of this magnitude as well mm. um speaking about training and getting ready for the fight again i was watching uh behind the ropes um the series they've done a little documentary series with sky with the preparation and on there obviously you, you you've been working with with ben davidson uh over in essex which you've been doing for a little while he is known as one of the best young minds in boxing uh clearly Know, working with Anthony Joshua at the moment, I think you've been sparring AJ as well. Part of this, haven't you? Um, what's that like working with Ben, and what has he added to the team? Because clearly, you've still got Rob. He's been he's been there since day one. What's 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 Ben brought to preparations? Um, I think just clarity to a lot of things. I think a lot of obviously my career into boxing or through boxing has been very fast paced. Which yeah, I've jumped I've jumped my way through a lot of a lot of things, which means I've skipped a lot of steps along the way. There's some foundational things I miss. There's, it's really weird, but like with boxing, at least I, I've discovered with Ben that there's a reason why for doing everything. You don't yeah. just do something for the sake of doing it. You're, you're looking for something. You want something from it. You're trying to find something out. Um, so that kind of, that boxing IQ he's given to me and made me really pay attention in scenarios, in situations of a fight and realize that it's not as simple as I'm just throwing a punch to try and hit my opponent. I'm doing multiple things with throwing that punch and how I do yeah. it and the angle and the speed and da, 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 da. there's so many details that go into just one thing that it makes me pay attention to so much more. So I have such a broader knowledge of boxing now. So in the ring, um, I can assess the situation a lot better and be like, okay, cool. This isn't working because of this, 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 this. this. I know the answer to this problem because I've already solved it five times over in training. Um, so it gives you it gives you a level of comfort as well because when you get in the sticky situation in boxing as well, it's, you can get panicky, you can get jittery, mm. you can get a bit nervous and whatever. When you when you understand the game better and you know what you're there for and you know you're in the middle of a problem, but say you know the answer and you know how to work yourself out, you're a lot calmer, a lot more relaxed, you use up less energy. So it all carries through. It's such a such a broad spectrum of 
ways to box, obviously. Mm, now, if we just park the fight for a minute, we'll come back to that, obviously, at the end of this chat, where I'm going to actually put prediction and potentially what might be next. Um, I want to focus a little bit on what you mean to Suffolk and maybe what Suffolk <laughs> means to you. Because <laughs> You may laugh, I know you're very modest, but we've never had a heavyweight doing what you're you're doing. No, mm. like, We never had a boxer doing what you're doing. We had David Starry, who I think was probably around before you were born, who, who fought, I think he was co-main he fought joe calzaghi for the world title on the uh, mike tyson's first fight in in the uk mm. in manchester that was like 2001 and he was he was i want to say british european and commonwealth champion super middleweight but we've certainly never had a heavyweight like you we've never had a guy headlining the o2 arena as a suffolk heavyweight either as a, a suffolk boxer as a whole um and i was speaking to eilish Tierney, who's obviously starting the uh, the path yeah. that you've already tread and she spoke to me about how much you mean to her as an inspiration and also the fact that you're there um to actually help she can call on you and you know, ask you questions and that kind of thing what does that mean to you mate first of all as, as making history which is what you're doing with every fight we'll still be talking about <laughs> you mate in 30 40 50 years um but also kind of seeing these people come through behind you as well yeah no it's, it's great because that's always what i've that's always what I've wanted because my path into professional boxing wasn't the the simplest, wasn't necessarily the easiest. Yeah. So to to be to have tread the path and and lead the path for other people to follow is is up there with one of the top things that I've wanted to achieve or wanted to be able to do to mm. to have something to, for other people to look at and go right. Well, I'm not the, I'm not the amateur this or this isn't going right for me or whatever. But Fab's made a way so not necessarily let me follow his path or look at him but at least if he can do it then i can do it kind of thing um yeah. that's something i'm very prideful about i do really i do really care for i do really care about is just being the one for someone to look to um yeah in terms of being being the pride of stuff like i don't know about that too much but um that's i guess that's a that's a question for everyone else more so but um like it's it's clear to see that like, i i love my town i love where i'm from I love the yeah. area. I love every, I love everything. Like I pr appreciate and value where I'm from and the place I grew up and that taught me everything I know and, and like my friends and family and everything's here. Like I, I love mm. it. So I like, I'm prideful as well of being able to, to like wear the badge on my shorts and, and wear yeah. that on a global stage on massive events on, on Sky Sports, on, on BT, on DAZN or TNT, sorry. Um, on their massive outlets and just take a little bit of Suffolk, a little bit of Ipswich across the globe, take it to Saudi Arabia, take it to the O2 Arena, which wherever, like, it's, it's big for me to be able to do those things. Yeah, we'll come on to town in a second. Just, just one more thing on Eilish. When I interviewed her before her pro debut, she told me that she's going to be world champion before you. Any uh, <laughs> any thoughts on that? <laughs> I've heard that. I saw that tagline, actually. Yeah. And look, fingers crossed. I hope she does it. I hope she does it. Excellent. Now let's get back to town. You're obviously talking there about wearing the the badge into into the ring and and all that kind of thing. Um, it's fair to say that town fans have definitely embraced you as well. Um, and and we're we're seeing. I've seen people message you on social media say they're going to be there on Sunday. They're going to be wearing their mm -hmm. town shirts. There's going to be a bit of a kind of travelling blue army. That's got to feel pretty good, mate. I mean, I know obviously you've been heavily involved with the football club. You love the football club, but to see the fans giving that back to you as well must be great yeah it is special it is special because like once <laughs> again once a football fans as a whole but especially town fans once they embrace you like you're yeah. you're one of them now you're one of the pack and i definitely feel like that like obviously love the club since i was a boy and and to be able to almost share in their success in the kind of obviously what they're doing and the way things are moving for them and kind of move alongside them and do my own thing but represent them the same way they're representing the town is it's fantastic to be doing those two things kind of parallel. Yeah, and I know as part of that, clearly you you get on well with the players. I know Mark Ashton um, is is a friend of yours. Uh, we mm. saw you on the pitch, didn't we? After after they won promotion, trying to persuade George Hurst to stay. So good job there. <laughs> yeah. Got that in. Yeah. Do you, have did they sent bit. you any? I did my bit. Yeah, you certainly did, mate. Have they sent you? Did you get any messages from players? I mean, Mark Ashton, when we spoke to him um, a few months ago, he he told us how difficult it was for him to watch you fight. Adelaide mm. because he said I'm I consider Fabio a mate and it's hard to yeah. watch a mate get punched in the face so do you get those, that kind of interaction from them before your fights do you get messages is, are any of them coming is Ashton going to be there 
Yeah, um, Mark's going. He's taking yeah. he's taking a bunch of boys, taking a bunch of staff and stuff. They're all going along. Um, they're supporting. He loves it, so he'll be there. Um, the players aren't going. I've told him none of them are allowed to come because we've got Southampton the next yeah, day. So that's true. Uh, <laughs> they can get to bed. I was speaking to I was speaking to Harry the other day actually, and yeah. um, I said the exact same to him. He said about wanting to come, and I said no, 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 no. You get yourself to bed, mate. You get an early night. Get some rest in because big game on Monday. Big game on Monday. So they're, they're they're supportive. They like message me before and after fights and stuff, and like all the best and well done and all the rest. So they're all they're like I say we've got a great great bunch of lads, and it's. Mm. They're a great team. They're great together, and like I say, they all, they all look look out for and support me as well. So it's it's fantastic because we're all just like I said, we're just all all doing really well, all moving forward, but wanting whoever else is around us to join on as well and and, and keep it going. Yeah, and you mentioned there is. I mean, it's a big weekend for 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 sporting Ipswich and sporting Suffolk as a whole. We've got Town Play Good Friday, then we've got you mm. just headlining the O two on Sunday night, and then they play. It's a huge game, like you say. Southampton on Monday and I'm hearing people say perfect weekend two wins from town and, and Fab knocks out Fraser Clark I mean that that's that's perfect isn't it that would be the, the ideal weekend <laughs> yeah yeah it's not a bad it's not a bad weekend at all I'll take that one take that off yeah. put that one in the books that'll be a good one yeah and then the next weekend of course is the derby um now I know you weren't around for the the, the, the game at Portman Rose. Um, are you flying, getting off on holiday and having a bit of a relax after this fight immediately? Is there any chance we might see you at Norwich on, on April the 6th? I am, I am going on holiday. I am going on holiday. Fair but play. I will be at the game. I will be there. I pushed, I messed up the first time. I got my dates wrong and, mix, and messed some things up. But this time, I made sure that the holiday was after, after the game. So I'll be, I'll be at the Norwich game. I'll be at the away day. Outstanding. Right then, um, one more, well, two more questions. Uh, and this is something I always have to talk to you about. Portman Road. We know mm. that's been talked about. We know we've seen you at Portman Road with, with Mark Ashton and Eddie Hearn. Um, this was one of the, the fights potentially being talked about as being there. When you win this fight, you'd have defended the belt twice. Mm. Defend it once more, the Lonsdale belt, and you keep it. And that's one of the, the, the prettiest, most historic belts in boxing. First of all, is that important to you, winning that belt outright? And if it, that kind of fight would need to be a big fight, clearly, to, to, to get to Portman Road, how far away do you think we are from a Portman Road fight? Because you fight in March and then we've got the whole summer sort of stretched ahead of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, we're um, the, obviously winning the belt outright is a fantastic achievement and is something yeah. I wouldn't, I would like to do. I wouldn't necessarily be against doing, but also I don't want to have. I wouldn't want to have a fight for the sake of having a fight just to do that at yeah. the same time. I'd want to have a meaningful fight, a good fight, a big fight. Um, because they're the ones, they're the ones I love being in. I love being a part of those. I love the, I love everything that goes into them. So if those two things can mesh together and the right fight comes up, then yeah, definitely. If not, then there's a lot of big options for me to fight other big names in the division and things. I'm now well ranked in the international yeah. stage. So there's other, there's other big opportunities out there for me. Um, which is always great. So Portman Road is definitely on the cards. Um, it's definitely an option. It's definitely there. I've spoken to Mark. He's he's probably been on me more than I've been on him about it. He he loves yeah. the idea. He really wants it to happen and come together. Obviously, I want I, I want to make sure I do it properly though. I want to make sure it's done. It's done right. It's done properly. I want to have a, a big name, a big fight, big occasion, um, and make sure it's it's just all it all comes off perfectly. So. Fingers crossed after this, we'll start looking around, see what, see what the options are, see who's around, see what fights there are, any mm. that are good or make sense one way or the other, and then we'll go from there. I mean, traditionally, obviously, British title is tends to be a springboard to world-level fights and win this fight, and you're going to be very much in that conversation. You already mentioned you, you've got a world ranking, so do you feel like that might be next after this, like stepping up the world, the world ladder, as it were? Yeah, it definitely seems like the most likely option. Um, yeah. It seems like the most likely route after this fight. Like I say, there's not too many British level fighters now um, that are in the realm for me to fight. To be honest, yeah. so it would be it would look more international for me as I'm when mm. I'm done with this one. Exciting stuff, right? Then final question. I've kept you far too long already. You need to go and relax and recover. Uh, obviously, you're going to win the fight on Sunday. Obviously, you've knocked, you've knocked out 16 guys in a row. Is Fraser Clark going to hear the final bell Sunday? 
<laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And how do you, how do you see that going? Because looking at looking at the fight, I wonder. A lot of guys come out and try and put it on you straight away. You've got to be a bit of a reputation as a, as a slow start. You said that yourself. I wonder if Fraser might not do that. I wonder if he might be thinking a longer fight might benefit him. He's he's got the pedigree. He's got you know all that kind of stuff. Is, is that something you think might happen? Potentially. I, I really I don't know what their plan is because yeah. guys have come after me early and the fight's been finished up early for them and. And people have been more patient about it and I've gone out and found them. So yeah. either way, I've got an answer. So he can roll the dice however he wishes. It's, it doesn't matter when the outcome is going to be the same. Superb. Fab, I'll let you get on. Thanks so much for taking the time. I know you're an extremely busy guy. So Fabio Ward, the headlines, headlines, I'll say that again, the O2 <laughs> Arena this Sunday. You can watch it live on Sky Sports if you can't be there. He's fighting Fraser Clark, defending his British and Commonwealth heavyweight titles. Thanks so much for your time, Fab. And I'm going to say it, you are the pride of Suffolk and we're, we're all going to be proud to see you in that <laughs> ring on, yeah. on Sunday night and, and having your hand raised again. Best of luck, mate. Appreciate that, mate. Thank you very much. Nice one. Thank you.